Welcome to the Ergonics Gate Lab and today we'll be talking about gate analysis using Ergonics inner soles. To test how well our inner soles work, we brought in some of the expert fitters from the athlete's foot to assess and treat their different foot types. In order to fully understand gate analysis, it's essential that you have a basic understanding of the anatomy of the foot. The foot is comprised of 26 bones. These 26 bones determine the gross shape of the foot. The gross shape of the foot determines how the foot will interact with the ground and ideally how the foot will function. Abnormal motion or function will generally lead to some sort of pain or discomfort in the foot. And how the foot interacts with the ground can be controlled by inner soles, shoes and exercises. The part of the foot that directly contacts the ground is called the plantar aspect of the foot. The plantar aspect of the foot is contoured by three arches. These are the medial arch, the lateral arch and the transverse arch. It's important that we support all of these three arches to control foot motions. An important part of the medial longitudinal arch is the calcaneal inclination angle. The calcaneal inclination angle is important because it's coupled to pronation. Now what this means is that the foot can't pronate as long as the calcaneal inclination angle is supported. Our inner soles help to control over pronation by supporting the calcaneal inclination angle. This leads to less chance of overcorrection than if we were using a wedged inner sole. So with this in mind, we wanted to show you how this relates to the pressure scan and gait analysis. You can see that when we're looking at our first customer, he has a high arched foot and late in the stance phase, the center of pressure medially deviates. This is more pronounced on the right foot. On the treadmill, you can see that our customer strikes with an inverted heel, pronates slightly, and then continues to pronate into toe-off. This is consistent with our pressure scan results. You can see that when our customer is weight-bearing on his right limb, that his foot is 4.5 degrees pronated, where 4 is the acceptable level of pronation. When our customer is running, it's difficult to see anything at full speed. However, when we slow this down, you can see that the amount of pronation has increased on the right-hand side to 6.5 degrees. At this point, let's take a quick look at pronation and how it affects the lower limb. Pronation is a normal part of walking, and not all pronation is bad. Pronation helps to absorb shock as the foot strikes the ground. It helps to bring the foot into contact with the ground and also helps to adapt to irregular surfaces. Overpronation is what usually causes foot problems and foot pain. Overpronation is pronation that occurs in an irregular amount or at an irregular time during the gait cycle. When the foot pronates, the leg internally rotates and this strains the foot, hip, knee and lower back. When the foot pronates, the arch collapses and the calcaneus everts. This strains the ligaments and muscles of the foot and lower limb. The foot elongates and this stretches all of the plantar structures or the structures on the bottom of the foot, like the plantar fascia. The calcaneal inclination angle decreases and this is a major contributor to arch collapse. The entire lower limb internally rotates and this strains the shin, hip, knee and lower back. The bones of the midfoot unlock to become a loose bag of bones, which is a very inefficient lever for propulsion. Walking, or the gait cycle, can be broken down into two phases the swing phase when the foot is in the air and the stance phase when the foot is on the ground. In gait analysis we tend to focus on the stance phase of the gait cycle. This is where we can make the greatest difference with shoes, inner soles, stretching and exercising. To help us to further analyze the stance phase of gait we break it down into contact, mid stance and propulsion phases. By comparing a customer's gait pattern to what is considered normal, we're able to identify any potential problems with their walking. For adults, the following guidelines would be considered normal, so anything outside of these guidelines would be considered abnormal. During the contact phase of the gait cycle, the foot pronates around 4 degrees to allow the foot to become a mobile adapter and adapt to the ground. During the mid-stance phase, the foot should progressively supinate to become a rigid lever for propulsion. Through much of the propulsion phase, the foot will continue to supinate, making it a rigid and effective lever for propulsion. Now let's take a look at the difference that a well-fitted running shoe makes to the gait cycle. In the side-by-side -side view, you can see that the overall pronation has been reduced by 1.4 degrees. This still sits outside what we would consider normal, as the foot still pronates 5.1 degrees. 
We can further customize this shoe by adding an inner sole that will help to control excess motions without overcorrecting the foot. On this occasion we use the ultra soft inner sole because it's zero degrees wedged and helps to support the calcaneal inclination angle. This will control overpronation without overcorrecting the foot. The right hand image on this screen is a shoe that has been fitted with an ultra soft inner sole. You'll notice that the overall amount of pronation has been reduced to 4.4 degrees, which is very close to a normal amount of pronation. The large majority of running injuries are stress and overuse related injuries. Any reduction in the amount of overpronation will help to limit these injuries long term. So in summary, adding a well-fitted running shoe in this case reduced the amount of overall pronation by 1.4 degrees and then adding the ultra soft inner sole reduced the amount of overall pronation by 0.7 degrees further. Now let's take a look at a different foot type which is the pronated foot. In standing this customer is very pronated with the right being more pronounced than the left. So in standing, you can see that this customer is pronated around 10.6 degrees, when the normal that we would be looking for is around 4 degrees. We also ran the customer on the treadmill and the pressure scanner. From the pressure scan, you can see that our customer has high medial and lateral arches, and there's an increased pressure towards the medial forefoot. The center of pressure also deviates medially late. Now let's take a closer look at our customer running. When our customer is running on the treadmill, you can see that the overall amount of pronation is 9.8 degrees. This is actually a reduction in the amount of overall pronation from standing. This can be explained by the active muscular control of the foot during running. You can see here on the right hand screen that a well fitted running shoe reduced the amount of overall pronation by 0.3 degrees. Now let's customize the shoe further by adding one of our inner soles to work with the shoe to help to limit overpronation. You can see here on the right hand screen that the shoe with the inner sole fitted has improved the foot position more so than the shoe alone. On this occasion our inner soles were able to control overpronation to within normal limits without overcorrection or irritation. It's the subtle differences with our inner soles that have helped us to achieve these results. Let's take a closer look at our inner soles. So the points of difference of our inner soles are, they control over pronation without wedging the foot, they enhance the support features of the shoe, and they cushion the foot for instant comfort. Our inner soles do this by supporting the calcaneal inclination angle, they have an extended medial arch support, thin yet soft heel, and they're soft and comfortable from the moment they're worn. Let's take a look at three common pressure scans and how these relate to the use of our inner soles. The first pressure scan is for a typically pronated foot. From the pressure scan results we can see that there's increased pressure on the medial or inside part of the foot. So using our inner soles to treat pronated or flat feet, they support the entire medial arch of the foot and this limits arch collapse and foot pain and they also cushion the entire foot. The next image is of a typically supinated foot. From the pressure scan we can see that there's increased pressure to the lateral or the outside part of the foot. We also know that high arched feet are poor shock absorbers. So using our inner soles in this instance would help to support the medial and lateral arches of the foot without any chance of overcorrection. They cushion the high impact areas of the foot which would be the lateral part of the foot in this instance. And they also help to keep the body's natural fatty pad beneath the heel with a deep heel cup. The next pressure scan is of a typically neutral foot. You can see that there's arches present on both the medial and lateral side of the foot. We know that our inner soles support both the medial and lateral arches of the foot without destabilizing the foot. They also cushion the high impact areas you can see here on the pressure scan. So using our inner soles to treat neutral feet, you'll effectively cradle the inside and outside arches of the foot without overcorrecting. The soft poron will cushion the high impact areas of the foot. The deep heel cup will also keep the foot's natural fatty pad beneath the heel to further enhance cushioning. So the overall result of using our inner soles on a neutral foot will be a more comfortable and more efficiently functioning foot. Thanks for watching the Ergonics Gate Lab with the Athlete's Foot. 
For more information on our products, please go to ergonics.com.au.